Weona Grocery Stores. Our history expert solves local mysteries. Who, what, when, where, why, and why not? Well, sometimes. An article by Vance Lauderdale. Brought to you by Memphis, the City Magazine. Dear Vance, what's the story behind the old we own a grocery stores that seem to be on every corner of our city. Was that a family name? This from HR in Germantown. Dear HR, these days it seems Memphians have their choice of two kinds of groceries, Kroger and all the rest. And all the rest includes the big box stores that also sell groceries. Kroger with some 20 stores in the Memphis area is the biggest name in town. It may surprise readers to know they've been around more than a century when a fellow named Bernard Kroger, yes, that's the origin of the name, opened a small store in Cincinnati, Ohio in 1883. Go back a generation or two in Memphis, though, and even though Kroger was one option for families, they could also shop at C's L's, Montesas, Pick Pack, Mega Market, Big Star, and of course, Piggly Wiggly. I'm not going to repeat the story, told in this column at least 300 times it seems, about Memphian Clarence Saunders' invention of the modern-day supermarket with his Piggly Wiggly self-service stores, which first opened here in 1916. But even though those were a tremendous success, a look through old newspapers from the early 1900s reveals Arrow, Silver Saver, Leadway, Liberty Cash, and many other grocers ran full ads that seemingly listed every single product shoppers could find on their shelves. So that, finally, brings us to Weona, always spelled with a capital O. Those national chains were stiff competition for the little mom-and-pop grocers who opened tiny stores in neighborhoods all over Memphis. These were family-owned businesses, and often those families lived above or in back of their compact buildings. Keep in mind that in the early 1900s, few people in Memphis owned cars, so it was much easier to stroll down the block and shop at the corner grocery than catch a ride or take the bus or trolley to the larger markets. Besides, the kind of place where everybody knows your name often operated as the heartbeat of the community, the place where you'd meet your friends and neighbors. But it was a daily challenge for individual store owners to compete with the big boys. So in 1930, a dozen Italian-owned grocers decided to band together to form their own small chain. This would allow them to get better prices from their suppliers, since they could purchase in bulk, and they could certainly save money on newspaper advertising. Instead of each store buying its own small ad, the owners could run a single large ad with the names and addresses of each store running across the bottom. Even so, such a venture still needed an identity. And I don't know who came up with this idea, but the grocers announced a local competition to name their new venture. On March 14, 1930, the Commercial Appeal announced that among the thousands upon thousands of submissions, good, ordinary, and distinguished, the winner was Weona, submitted by Mrs. S.A. Brown of Shaw, Mississippi. She received a $100 check for her effort. It's a catchy name, all right, and the newspaper explained Weona was given preference not because of its brilliance, but because of its utter simplicity and homeliness. It expresses a basic idea with astonishing directness. We own a food store. The commercial appeal. Back of that statement lies the history of each grocer. Hard work, struggle, and triumphant survival. So to answer the reader's question, no, Weona was not a family name. I'm sure the fact that it sounded vaguely Italian also played a role in its selection. But by some accounts, Weona was actually a Native American name. A town in Arkansas had been called that since the late 1800s, and such business as the Weona Lumber Company and Weona Land Company, probably connected in some way, were major employers in this area around the same time. In Memphis in the 1920s, a Weona Women's Club met for cards every weekend, and men formed the Weona Lodge here. Now, I'm not trying to take anything away from Mrs. Brown. I'm just saying 
she took an existing name and saw how it could sound Italian and convey the individual ownership of the stores. That was an important part of the, of the Weona chain, you see. Even in the newspaper ads, they made sure to remind people of the family involvement. The commercial appeal proclaimed, You share in the profits. Every we own a store is individually owned and operated. That means you get personal service, courteous attention, and quality foods selected for you by its store owner. Family shop at Lee Now's we own a number 75 on Peabody. Bittman's we own a number 12 on Lamar. Or Bruna's we own a number 58 on East McLemore. Just to name a few I've written about before. Whereas the larger change just became numbers, Arrow Store number 21 or Leadway number 12, for example. About this time, the Weona grocers realized another benefit of pooling their resources. It gave them the financial means to construct a massive, centrally located warehouse for all the stores here. Inside were crates of canned goods, bread, meat, fruit, candy, and dairy products, including the Weona Farms brand of butter. Although you can't tell from the old black and white photo shown here, the modern yellow brick building, 670 South Cooper, carried a sign above the entrance spelling out Weona in bright orange neon. The network of stores continued to thrive until the mid-1960s or so, but finally, they along with so many other mom-and-pop businesses around town, came to the sad realization that, despite their best efforts, they simply couldn't compete with the larger chains. They, these were small stores, after all, and despite the personal service, shoppers preferred the large selection offered at Pick Pack and Big Star. I can't tell you when all the official Weona stores closed in Memphis. Many of the old buildings have survived, now housing other businesses. That last store in Chelsea still operates as a neighborhood market, but the Weona sign is gone. And if you think the Weona warehouse on Cooper looks familiar, that's because it's still standing, little changed from when it was first constructed. For half a century, it housed tooth printing, and now it's home to Lehman Roberts, a roof constructing firm. Do you have a question for Vance? You can email him at askvance at memphismagazine.com or write him at Memphis Magazine, Post Office, Box 1738, Memphis, Tennessee, 38101. Vance Lauderdale is the history columnist for Memphis Magazine and Inside Memphis Business. His dramatic life story is so well known that school children are taught to recite it for extra credit. If you enjoy Vance's musings, why not subscribe to the Memphis Magazine weekly newsletter and find all that is happening now and has happened in and around Memphis. The email is free, and you can find the link below this video to get your adventure started. Did I mention it's free?